ICN that is International Code of Nomenclature for Algae, Fungi and Plants. So what is this code of nomenclature? So we have several kind of nomenclatural code that uh, that is set of rules and regulations uh, you know that formalizes how to name a, a species, how to classify, how to reclassify all those things. We have several such codes right in our everyday life for example Constitution of India you know so that is you know that is a, that shows like what are the duties and responsibilities of a citizen of india right and also indian penal code again that's a code of police right people see that what, what which is crime and what is the extent of the crime all those things are in ipc sections different kinds of sections so similar way the taxonomists usually have the, these kind of codes of uh, taxonomy and classification uh, for example iczn that is international code of zoological nomenclature uh, ICNB and so on right ICN is what the the you know that uh, uh, you know plant biologists use including the mycologist who are working on the fungus and lichens and mushrooms isn't it so yes ICNB means international code of nomenclature of bacteria you know and of course for viruses they have a different uh, division called ICTV that is international committee on taxonomy of viruses and also for uh, they also have something called baltimore system and for bacteria it is burgess manual is a very important uh, reference book for classification of the bacteria bacteriology you know burgess manual of systematic bacteriology right and yes yeah, so i see and uh, they keep on changing this rule in light of new evidence you know and also whenever there is a new case where existing rules are inadequate like the cricket you know so of course the cricket rules keep on changing right uh, when uh, for example uh, run out the rules of run out uh, you know all, all those things or lbw all those things keep on revising whenever the new uh, uh, case study comes in a new kind of a situation arises right so it needs to accommodate all those uh, things so that is why we have keep on changing every two years or three year earlier it it used to be called melbourne cord in australia there has been a meeting of the systematicists to formalize that cord and after that we have now the latest cord which is currently in force as of today that is in 2021 is uh, the cord which has been adopted in shenzhen you know that is in china right in 2018 so this is the latest cord of the nomenclature of the the plants fungi and algae together yeah so shenzhen is different from shenzhen okay so that is uh, <laughs> there's a confusion what is this shenzhen right so international code of nomenclature for algae fungi and plants so check out it's uh, iapt's shenzhen code website so i think that is the best option for us to learn more about uh, this particular shenzhen code right search out google it you can directly google shenzhen code s h e n z h e n shenzhen is a chinese name don't confuse with schengen like if you ever been to europe schengen visa is what we indians needed right so it's like for visitors visa to go anywhere in the europe one visa you can go any countries which are schengen uh, countries you know schengen member state not entire europe euro eu are part of the schengen though you know for example uh, you cannot travel to the united kingdom uh, you know though it is you can call it as a european country but uk of course it is not part of the eu now right so yeah so these schengen countries you can travel including the iceland with that visa you know that is schengen but this is shenzhen it's a chinese state uh, city right so the taxonomists are of course half pay lawyers too that is very very important you know so it is it's a law you know so we have to actually decide uh, look at the different kinds of code which which name will have priority who will have priority is the reclassification uh, you know or merger of the two species into one putative species is uh, it's a formal it's a legal or illegal all those things right so it is something like a lawyer so do check out icn has got 62 articles at iapt website and also just do check out the glossary of the terms which are oftentimes used in uh, you know the plant systematics and taxonomy so that that glossary is a very good uh, you know resource for plant taxonomy as discipline as a whole right so one of the uh, you know often used term is called effective publication 
So if you describe a new species and if you publish that in, uh, uh, you know, in your uh, uh, MSc thesis, is it effective? Effective means, uh, you know, that can be considered as formal uh, taxonomic revisions or new species descriptions. So according to this particular rule, that is 29.1, uh, the effective publication of the ICN, name should be accepted in a peer-reviewed journal uh, and also uh, online only journal is also fine. The PDF should be freely available to everybody, you know. So, uh, yeah, so that is what it need not be free, you know. So if you give some form where persons can even purchase that PDF, then again, there is an effective publication, you see. So you can check out uh, that the rule 29.1 and other article 29.3 and A1, all those things, right. And also, if you publish that in a book, online publication with IC, ISSN number or ISBN number, the, the book, ISSN is for uh, the journals, right? Then it is effective publication, right? And uh, 30.1 is another rule that publication is not affected by communication of nomenclature novelties at a public meeting. Simply going to a conference and then you're saying that uh, these two species are same. That is not formal, you know? or placing the names in collections of gardens open to the public like in a herbarium uh, you know you're you're putting a, a monograph and you're keeping there and declaring it is a new species no it is not formal right or issue of microfilm made from the manuscript or typescript these are kind of old techniques right microfilm and or nobody is using this uh, thing or powerpoint presentation for example no that is invalid right or by distribution of electronic material other than described in article 29 for example your close uh, group for example a facebook group you're simply dis uh, distributing some material and claiming it to be a new species no that is not formal it has to be in a publication you know that is then only it is an effective publication right so after 1953 of an independent non-serial work stated to be in a thesis submitted to the university or other uh, Institute of Education for the purpose of obtaining a degree does not constitute effective publication. You know, so for, for example, if you write something on a PhD thesis, then it's not. Given that the thesis is after 1953. So before 1953, thesis can be considered because the rule adopted by this court in 1953 onwards, right? Yeah, so that is what, uh, yes. So description of species, species description means it is a formal way to, you know, uh, discover, uh, to uh, formalize the discovery of a new species. So that is called species description. As the name say, it's you're describing all the, the peculiarities of a species and how that species is different from closely related other species, you know. So it's a published statement of the feature or features of a taxon, uh, a description or also diagnosis is required for the valid publication of the name. So diagnosis is what are the unique attributes of that thing in comparison with other closely related species. Description is only about your species, you are completely describing the morphological characteristics. And also you can describe the ecology and habitat, you know, life cycle, all this you can write on the description of the species. So diagnosis, as, you, as I told you, it's the features that distinguishes that taxon from other closely related taxa. Right. So traditionally, the species descriptions were in Latin, and that is why most of the university, old university botany department, used to have a Latin specialist. You know, but since 2013, Latin requirement has been waived off. Now it's good you can write it in English or any other language where you would like to publish your paper. You know, so that Latin requirement is no longer required. For example, this is one of the species which we described. Ulva uniciriata and uh, in you know so usually what I do is that whenever I put uh, this particular uh, uh, new species name that is SPNOV means species novum new species and in epithet I refer to the figure of the holotype you know so that is the main uh, specimen where my fig my entire description is based on you no know? so this one is very important I'm um, actually uh, you know, I'm pointing it into one figure of that publication. Of course, this is coming from a published paper, right? So that, then description. So this is the morphology of that particular species. Then type locality means from where I isolated this particular 
specimen from, including the latitude and longitude and other uh, related information like for example near Boat Jetty in the Diamond Harbor in West Bengal from this I collected from. The holotype, holotype is the one herbarium voucher specimen linked with the formal species description that means one name. So that each name, each new name of the species discovery should have one herbarium voucher, herbarium sheet. So that is called holotype. So for this particular new species, the holotype is deposited in the Central National Herbarium in Kolkata. And this is the ID of it, you know. And of course, the DNA sequence is in the gen bank as well. And isotype is basically the, the duplicate of the holotype in case the holotype miss, for example, because of fire, you know, or because of the pest infestation. So in case a holotype misses, then lost, then we have isotype also, right? In case isotype is also gone, then what we have? You know, we can have a lectotype. Somebody else can designate a new holotype, uh, which cannot be called as holotype, but can be called as lectotype. All these are possible within the uh, limits set by code of nomenclature. You know, etymology is another part of the description. Etymology means why I choose this epithet. Ulva's already existing name, the genus name, a uh, Linnaean name. Uniseriata is a name which I choose for my species. And why did I decide Uniseriata? And that is what the etymology section here. Your history of the word, right? Specific epithet refers to Uniseriate morphology of the thallus that aids in the identification, you know. And finally, acknowledgement. So all these are some of the parts common with, uh, you know, new species descriptions. And uh, the binomial, if you look, different parts of the binomial, the first part, Ulva, is the genus name, singular noun. And Uniseriata is a specific epithet. So, which is basically, it could be adject, modifying the generic name or a noun in apposition or a possessive noun. You know, so all these things should follow the Latin nomenclature, the rules. You know, species nova, that is SPNOV means. And this is the epitype, the figure. So just after that species name in parenthesis that is in bracket, you should put the figure where it is, uh, which which is your epitype of it. You know, so generic and specific epithet should be if it should not be same in the ICN in in uh, uh, botanical nomenclature. Same thing like ulva ulva. No, it cannot be the case. But for zoological nomenclature, ratus ratus is okay. You know, benzoin benzoin. Uh, in, in zoology it is okay, but for botany it is not, which can constitute as a totonym. Totonym is basically, uh, you know, the same name, repeated redundancy, isn't it? Which is an invalid binomial. So if you ever put forth this kind of thing, somebody else can override your new name with his or her new name, you know, so you will be losing that priority. So be careful about it. So totonym means redundancy, right? So tautology, uh, so many such words, for example, return back. We commonly use in our everyday life language, right? Return back, back to India after a foreign trip or we wear the face mask during COVID-19 time. Or yeah, I like to go to the sea beach. All these words are totonyms. Have you ever thought of it? You know, mask is the something which you have to wear it on your face. You cannot wear mask on your belly, you know, and back return means, of course, you're going back to somewhere, you know, sea beach or always a beach is on the sea. Armed gunman or it is what it is makes no sense. It's a cliche, right? Gunman is always armed. Single bachelor, bachelor by definition is a single man, isn't it? Yes. So depreciate in value, of course, depreciate by its definition is decreasing the value like for example the used car isn't it another of my favorite example is that bible is the word of god bible or whatever the holy book is you know so people say it is the word of the god why if you ask they will say because the bible tells us so it's written in the bible and why so because the bible is infallible and why so because the bible is a word of god so it keeps on rotating rotating there is a totonym you know so, yeah, so that second part of the species name is called specific epithet, you know, that usually have something to do with, uh, that usually have some meaning that has something to do with the morphology. So, all these are different examples of the commonly used specific epithet, you know, for example, bicolor means uh, two colors, 
right uh, yes yeah, so that is what it means right by color or uh, borealis means northern right aureus means golden right uh, all these uh, uh, names have got some uh, you know it, these meanings in latin so that is why it is very very commonly used for example for moses means beautiful you can use it so any of this one in uh, to describe best describe your new species you know and yes so the formal one has got the third component which i told you authority and yes so authority the uh, you know andromeda ferruginia andromeda is the name of galaxy or so andromeda right and what happened is that this particular species walter he described andromeda ferruginia for this particular plant in 1788 and later systematists, uh, you know, they became clear that it doesn't belong to the genus Andromeda. It is something else. So the genus is Lionia. You know, so Nuttel uh, is the, the person who actually renamed uh, it as Andromeda. It's it, this particular species taken out from Andromeda and then reclassified with Lionia. So in that case, this particular guy, the Nuttel, the taxonomist, cannot change Ferruginia. Ferruginia is remained same and the original a person, the authority becomes in the bracket. Walt then comes neutral in 1818. You know, so here the original authority is Walt in 1818 and reclassification is done by neutral in 1818, right? Original guy, the Walter described it as Andromeda Ferruginia in 1788. So that is why the principle of priority, the older one is valid but of course the reclassification is important uh, because Nuttel has got its own reasoning why it doesn't belongs to Andromeda it belongs rather to Lionia or rather the Andromeda entire genus has been reclassified as Lionia all these things happen right another example here is Lidum Granlandicum order in 1771 you know the famous ecology or uh, the the, uh, the, the uh, you know ecologist right order and 1771 order uh, he called this flower uh, flowering plant species as ledum but then now we know that it is not ledum it is uh, rhododendron now the person who grew reclassified this into rhododendron is uh, cron and jude in 1990s the latest one based on the dna evidence so the Crown and Jude is not the authority. The authority remains same order, the one who described. And also the specific epithet is also unchanged. Only the genus is changed and you have to put who changed the genus into this. Right? I hope it's clear. So rhododendron is basically, it's a Himalayan species. You might know a very beautiful uh, tree in Himalayas, right? But unfortunately, it's, uh, it's under tremendous threat from uh, climate change. I haven't seen any... Uh, you know rhododendron gardens in india correct me if i'm wrong but recently i have been to a uh, germany in bremen so i was on sabbatical at leibniz institute there in 2019 and and in bremen there is a very beautiful garden rhododendron park you know so beautiful very enchanting another example is gossipium tomentosum that is a cotton isn't it so nut x seam what does that mean Note is originally proposed, but no effective publication. He didn't put any publication, you know. But X seem is the, is the person who formally described it. So the still, then the note's name has to be part of that formal species name. The some credit has to be given, right? Even though the person didn't formally describe it. Another example is that Viburnum ternatum rager insurgent. What does that mean? It is basically it's a book edited by this person sergeant so in which redder described this one in a in a published book so that is why sometime you can see it in this case and sometime you will see that there, there's a term called incertacidis so that means that placement uncertain for example a genus and species name the binomial name but we don't know exactly which family it belongs to so in such cases we can use this term incertacidis placement inside the taxonomic hierarchy uncertain and beware that these ranks are arbitrary uh, genus and species name only makes sense but more than that all this family order class you know uh, sub kingdom and kingdom all these things are arbitrary 
right so wrangler system called phyloclade is now getting really popular so it is a, it is a uninomial it is not even binomial you know it's very very different so phyloclade is based only upon phylogenetic systematics and only clades are named and only one name for each clade you know so for example 18s you can use it for eukaryotes right 18s gene you can construct the tree and then whichever there is a clade wherever there is a clade you are naming it with some names so there is no rank you know like family sub sub order order supra order nothing like that you know so it's it's getting really popular these days now in in taxonomy there is this concept called type so type is a particular specimen or in some cases a group of specimens of an organism which is uh, to which the scientific name of that organism is formally attached so whenever you're describing a new species so the name is invariably linked with or attached with a specimen and that specimen is called type usually it's called holotype you know so it is an example that serves to anchor or centralize the defining features of that particular taxon you know it's very very important the type is really important and usually the building where uh, all these type specimen are housed is called herbarium right uh, usually natural history museum also have got this big big herbarium along with herbarium they also have uh, you know the, the zoological specimen in formalin and also we also have the, the fossils you know of course fossils are also a type specimen it's in it in paleontology so type can be above the species level too for example type species of the genus type genus of the family and so on right some types include holotype which is uh, when a single specimen clearly designated in the original description, this specimen is called holotype of that species. You know, unless holotype is there, then of course the descriptions are not formal. You really need a holotype. And holotype is typically placed in major museum or herbarium, well-known public collection, you know, so that it is freely available for later examination by other biologists who are skeptical or who want to study more about that particular group. You know, so that's really important. Uh, you know, so Index Herbariarum is the list of the world's famous herbarium uh, maintained by UC Berkeley and uh, New York uh, Botanical Garden. So recently, the Central University of Punjab's herbarium got into that list. So now we are, uh, you know, we are allowed to house holotypes, you know, uh, whenever the new species is being described uh, anywhere from the world. And we are also ready for learning our specimen with other uh, equally renowned, uh, you know, the herbariums in the world. And now there is another term, isotype. What is that? It's a duplicate of the holotype to increase the chance of, uh, you know, redundancy. It's like backing up the data, right? So you uh, usually like you're writing a, a very important document like a PhD thesis. It's good uh, way to back up in the cloud, like in the, the Dropbox or Google Drive and also uh, local, uh, you know, backup into your, uh, you know, removable hard disk, right? Likewise, a holotype, what if that holotype is destroyed by fire or eaten by pest, you know, so that it's completely lost. So that is why in physical location, it's better to submit into two, three herbariums in the world, you know. So that is called isotype, the duplicate of the holotype. Neotype, what is that? So neotype is a specimen later selected to serve as a single type specimen when original holotype has been lost or destroyed in on the fire, for example, and there is no isotype. You know, then in that case, then it's called neotype. Or whether the, the original author never cited a specimen. If there is no uh, specimen, there is no holotype, then the, you can call it as a neotype. For example, Homo sapiens is our own species name, right? So of course what is the type specimen of it it's very interesting because it is Carl Linnaeus is a guy who described as homo sapiens and he didn't designate the holotype he could have designated his own mother for example you know or his own kid children <laughs> it's not possible his own children right his own parents are okay but he didn't do it and after his death his own corpse which is lying at the, his grave in Uppsala Cathedral in Sweden has become uh, the, the neotype, it is not really holotype, it, it became the neotype. Later on, somebody else said it, right? Then what is syntype and lectotype? So syntype is one of the two or 
more specimen that is listed in the species description where no holotype was designated if somebody is uh, describing the species with the different kinds of types in which he didn't clearly mention which is the holotype then later on the taxonomist can name one as the syntype you know now what is lectotype if a specimen later selected to serve as a single type specimen of the species originally described from a set of syntypes from set of syntypes you know so which is the lectotype so later on the taxonomist can say okay this specimen is a single type specimen for the species from the set of the syntype that is called lectotype you know and synonyms are invalid synonyms are later names same species like uh, tulsi is osimum tenuiflorum and you uh, today you are writing a paper it says that osimum uh, whatever be the name no? osimum indica right so that name is not valid because the same species has already been described by linnaeus right then why all this kind of later names are called synonym which are invalid so as homonyms these are duplicate names invalid too names identical in spelling to another valid name you know so same species and genus the same combination can, you cannot use it again right so you have to be careful about it so that will construe as a homotype etymology at all it's a history of binomial why did you choose that particular specific epithet so that explanation is what etymology is about type location is exact location where the holotype is located so it's very very important for lecto typification and also for typification when you are describing it as a new species you know so where exactly is that location where you collected that sample from